Hey guys, and welcome back. I am Sam Crack, and when you're buying a car for a rebuild, the deciding factor in whether it's a good deal or not is whether or not the parts that you end up buying to rebuild the car are a good deal themselves. So, behind me is my 2015 Fiesta ST. When I first saw it online, it looked like this. You could see the whole front end is pretty much gone. There were a lot of big body parts that needed to be replaced. And really, I learned with this car and the Money Pajetta, the easiest places to find these parts the cheapest places to buy them, and the difference in qualities between third-party parts and OEM parts. This is the only guide you'll need. I'm going to give you a list of places you can buy all your parts from, and when you're all done, you'll have saved a ton of money over just walking into, say, a dealership or the auto parts store and buying them all over the counter. Let's get started. Now, the newer the car, the more difficult the part is going to be to get doesn't mean that the part is actually difficult, it just means that there's less newer cars out there damaged and that there's not a lot of used or wrecked cars for them to pull parts from. But let's talk about the dealership really quick. This is a 2015 Fiesta ST and I bought it last year in 2016. These Fiestas came out in 2014, so that left about a year for damaged Fiesta STs to be on the market. This left for a short period of time to go and find another salvaged Fiesta ST in a junkyard somewhere and try and buy parts off of it. So I went online and started researching parts, and what I found out is that I would have to purchase a lot of them from the dealership since there's not a lot of third-party parts available for this specific ST model. Generic Fiestas, there's a lot of third-party parts available, and the reason for that is because the Chinese manufacturers and the third-party manufacturers, they look at the most popular vehicles on the road, and then they make generic parts for that because those are the cars that obviously get damaged more. So, when it comes to the dealership, they have every part generally at MSRP for a customer like you or I just walking in. But the people that get discounts are body shops and businesses and other dealerships. So here's a big tip. Call the local dealership, in my case it was a Ford dealership for this car, and tell them, I'm planning on buying a lot of parts from you, and even more in the future, because I'm rebuilding a car, and I don't just need one part, I need several. Is there any way we can work out a wholesale style discount? The first Ford dealership I called locally offered me a wholesale discount close to what other small businesses would receive. So by just making one phone call and networking with the dealership, I've ordered from them several other times. They actually order from dealerships all across the state. And so if there's a dealership that won't give me a discount, they can call and it could be for another make, like my Volkswagen or Audi. They'll call them and get me a wholesale price on it and then sell it to me at the Ford dealership. It's pretty neat to know and it's especially a place to get large parts. Online you'll see things like hoods and bumpers, but they cost a lot to ship because they're large items. And when it comes to body parts, besides them being large, OEM body parts are really the best quality. I've had other sorts of generic and third-party body parts. They don't always either fit up correctly or have the same quality as the OEM part. So when it comes to parts that are tough to ship and also a little less common because the car might be newer, definitely try and call your local dealership and see if you can work out a wholesale discount with them. The second one is one of my favorites and if you haven't heard of it already, you're going to want to check it out. It's called car-parts.com. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Basically, this is an online inventory of all the parts and junkyards in the entire United States. So you pick your make and your model, and then you pick exactly the part you need, whether it's a body part or a mechanical part, and it will search the entire country. Their system knows if this Fiesta uses the same part as a generic Fiesta, say that a junkyard has a generic Fiesta, but it still has the part you need on it, you'll know exactly where that part is and where you need it. The other thing that it does is it finds local junkyards to you and it lists all the prices of all the junkyards and all their phone numbers so basically you can have an idea of what that part will cost. Now mind you these are obviously used parts off of totaled cars. If you need a hood and the car was hit in the front end chances are you're not going to get a hood. However, what you can do is once you've taken an inventory of everything you need for your project, 
call them up and buy as many parts from them as you can and then take their asking price for all those parts which are again usually listed on this website and ask the wrecker yard for a discount they're more than likely to give you a cheaper price if you buy more parts from them all these places are really wheeler and dealer style they all negotiate on almost everything so definitely try and buy as many parts as you can on my audi s3 i had a lot of suspension parts that were broken and the nice thing about an S3 is it shares a similar platform as the A3. So everything but the shocks, struts, and springs are basically the same suspension-wise off of an all-wheel drive A3. I found a yard that had a collision damage Audi A3 and I bought every single part from them. I probably paid about six or seven hundred dollars for all my suspension components from one place. If I bought them from the dealership, they would have cost likely four or five times that amount. So definitely check out car-parts.com for parts that are local to you and also parts at junkyards and wrecker yards that you can likely get for a very good price. The third suggestion requires a little bit more work and that's at a pick your part yard. A large public company by the name of LKQ owns a lot of these junkyards that you'll find on car-parts.com but they have other centers where you can actually go and pick the part off your car. Now the best part about the pick your part yards are the parts are probably the most inexpensive of any option we've discussed and that's obviously because you have to go and remove it versus a junkyard that would go and remove the parts for you and then sell them to you these places can just be a lot of fun to roam around for a few minutes anyway they usually charge you an entrance fee which is nominal a couple dollars and you bring your own toolbox and start picking now i'll list the link to the website below for lkq pick your parts yards Basically, you can go on their website, select your closest location, and see what cars are in their inventory. Now, they don't tell you anything past that, so say that you needed a hood for a Fiesta. Well, if they have a Fiesta there, there's still a chance that somebody might have went and picked that hood before. But like I said, you're going to pay a lot less, and obviously you're getting OEM parts because they're off of a smashed car in their yard. So definitely check out LKQ Pick Your Parts Yards if you want to have a little bit of fun. Don't mind getting your hands dirty, but you're going to save a lot of money buying a part from them. The next suggestion is one that you might not have thought about, but you probably know about. And that's an automotive form. So for the Fiesta ST, it's kind of an enthusiast car. The Audi S3, definitely an enthusiast car. There are forms dedicated to Audis and Fords, but specifically S-line cars and Fiesta STs. So what does that do? There's a lot of people that modify these cars. So since I still was trying to keep a tight budget on this car, I went online to the Fiesta ST form. As a matter of fact, I bought the majority of OEM parts from a really nice guy that happened to really mod his car. He swapped out almost anything you could think of. Body parts, engine parts, bigger turbos, but he had all of his stock parts and he didn't want them in his garage anymore. He sold them to me for an extremely low price because I bought everything in one shot. I still have excess Fiesta ST parts lying around, but it doesn't matter because I got such a great deal on them. And when I'm done, I can go and take whatever's excess and sell it online, helping again with the budget of the rebuild project. Now the next place likely everybody knows and everybody's used in the past, even if they bought an auto part, just to fix their car that they use every single day. And that's eBay eBay has a lot of competition and that means lower prices on a lot of third-party parts for all sorts of cars. Also a lot of the big junkyards list their parts on eBay because it provides them with great exposure and an easy outlet to sell all their parts. Now alongside with eBay I'm going to tell you rockauto.com has some of the lowest prices I've found. Again, a lot of these parts are generic. They do have some OEM options, obviously. And as long as you're okay with generic parts, then I say, go ahead. I'm totally okay with generic parts. As a matter of fact, I'll buy a generic part almost any time. However, when it comes to body panels, like I said previously, sometimes the fit and finish and the quality is a little bit cheaper than OEM. So I always like to find a used OEM part first. If not a new OEM part, then I'll go to the generic part, only if it saves me a substantial amount of money. So I hope all those places help you find all the parts you need to rebuild your car. When you're bidding on a car at the auction, take a look at it and see what the damage is like. Remember the picture of my Fiesta. From that picture, I kind of figured out what I needed. Fenders, bumpers, hood, and I knew I needed radiator support, everything in front. Start going on those websites and getting a generic idea. 
I always tend to write down on the high side what I see these parts going for. So I get a worst case scenario. What will this car cost to rebuild? That leaves me with a perfect final bid price that I know and I feel comfortable with when bidding on a car. Now one last tip. When it comes to safety components, I will only purchase a new or a used OEM airbag. There are a few websites that claim to remanufacture airbags and in China they've also known to remanufacture airbags and I want to tell you to stay away from that. It just is such a touchy thing and an airbag really could save your life or the person who's driving the car's life. So please buy a new or quality used OEM airbag. When it comes to repairing seat belts as I've shown you in previous videos I suggest you use the website myairbags.com. They repair seat belts and SRS modules. Now an SRS module is just a computer chip that's being reprogrammed to say hey no accident happened in this car. And the seat belts have very fine mechanisms in them but it's not like an airbag where it's truly meant for one-time use. And so again I suggest myairbags.com for all your seat belt and SRS module needs. If you feel all this helped you out please give me a like and also hit the subscribe button because in an upcoming video I'm going to show you a website that you can purchase for a very nominal fee. I'm talking anywhere from $10 to about $30. All the OEM dealership workshop manuals for almost any car. I bought a workshop manual for the Audi S3. I bought one for my Jetta. They save me hours in rebuild time. And that's because it tells you the step-by-step -step directions. You ever wonder how a mechanic on a brand new 2017 or 2018 car can get to work today and have your car finished tomorrow? That car just came out. How does he know exactly how to take it apart and put it back together? Every single car that's designed by any automaker has a workshop manual that goes along with it. And that workshop manual is limited only to the people that work at the dealership. I know of a website that sells these exact same workshop manuals and it will tell you exactly how to fix any part in your car. And that's really important because when you're dealing with a car that had accident damage, a lot of times you're fixing components that aren't typical things. Say that your starter went out on your 2005 Toyota Camry. Well, that could be a common issue and a lot of people will write about it on an automotive forum and give you a DIY on how to do it. Well, on newer cars, they obviously don't have as many problems right off the showroom floor. Sometimes you're buying these cars like in the case of my Fiesta with 8,000 miles and the cars haven't been completely torn apart yet. So these workshop manuals give you start to finish DIY guides for absolutely every single thing in the car. You could strip the car down to the bare frame and build it back together. That's how comprehensive they are. That'll be on an upcoming video on this channel. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you very soon. And thanks to everybody who's already subscribed. If you watch my S3 rebuild videos, I want to share something with you. I finally have it back. No more waiting. Upcoming videos on this and drive videos coming very soon.